Our theme tonight, which will be in two sessions, is the headship of Jesus. Those words may be not very familiar to you. I personally believe that in the years that lie ahead, there's going to be an increasing emphasis in the body of Christ on the headship of Jesus. I'd like to give a little background to what I'm going to be saying tonight about God's plan for winding up this age. There is a passage in Acts chapter 3 which seems to me to give a very clear outline of God's program to close the age. It doesn't mean that we know everything, but it does give us a kind of outline. These words were spoken by the Apostle Peter to a crowd of Jewish people in Jerusalem but in a sense that addressed to all of God's covenant people. This is what he said, Acts 3, 19 through 21. Repent therefore and be converted or turn back to God, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus the Messiah, who was before appointed for you, whom heaven must receive, and I add, and must retain, until the times or the period of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began or since time began. You see, this is a theme of all God's prophets. It's the climax of the age. It's the climax of all God's purposes of redemption. And Peter, I don't know whether he was conscious of it, but he outlined the steps that will lead up to this climax. And I've often said you can summarize them in four English words, all of which begin with the letters R-E. So if you have your Bible in front of you, you could look at it, and we'll see how many theologians we have here this evening. The first one is staring you right in the face. What is it? Repent. Repent. Repentance. You see, whenever God's people get away from him and lose out and miss God's blessing, there is one essential move back to God, which you cannot omit. There's no other way back to God but repentance. Now, when we repent and meet God's conditions, God blesses us with refreshing. That's right. That's a stimulation. It's a new upsurge of life. A lot of people have been refreshed in the last two decades, but many of them haven't realized that refreshing is not the end purpose of God. It's just a step on the way. And so we go on to verse 21, where we get the next word that begins with R-E, which is restoration. restoration. That's right restoration of all things. And then by implication, it's not there. It says heaven must receive Jesus the Messiah until the period of restoration of all things. And in that period of restoration of all things, the implication is he's going to leave heaven and come back to earth as king to reign in glory. So the key word there is return. Let's say them together, shall we? Repentance, refreshing, restoration, and return. You don't have so many bumper stickers here in this country, but in the United States, people are kind of bumper sticker crazy. And one of the ones that some Christians put is, guess who's coming back? <laughs> which is quite good. It stimulates people to think. I'm sure a lot of people haven't the faintest idea who's coming back, but I think we know. Now, over the years, I think I've been privileged, together with some of you, to witness phases of restoration. Uh, I think very clearly there has been a restoration of spiritual gifts which has given rise to what has become known as the charismatic movement. The word charisma is the standard Greek word for spiritual gifts. So 
The charismatic movement is the movement in which spiritual gifts have come forth. Now it's not the first movement. The Pentecostal movement went before it. I had the privilege, sometimes a rather doubtful privilege, to be part of that movement too. So one thing that is being restored is the spiritual gifts, the supernatural gifts of the Spirit. I think that's important because I don't believe anything can really fulfill God's purpose until we have the supernatural restored. God doesn't operate just on the natural plane. I once read through the book of Acts, which has 28 chapters, and which I consider to be the inspired picture of what the church should be like. And I asked myself this question, what would it be like if every reference to the manifestly supernatural were to be removed? And when I say manifestly supernatural, I'm not talking about things like the new birth, which is supernatural, but it's not manifest, it's internal, it's invisible. But things that can be perceived by the senses. So I read through the book of Acts, asking myself what would have to be left out. You know what I discovered? Not one of the 28 chapters would be left intact. Not one. So in a sense, it is not accurate to talk about New Testament Christianity without the supernatural element. And then I believe also being restored are what we call the ministry gifts, which are listed in Ephesians 4.11. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers. Also being restored, and in the same category and yet a little different, is the ministry of elders, who are the leaders of the local congregation. About 15 years ago, I started teaching about elders because I saw it there in the pages of the New Testament, and I thought if it's in the New Testament, it ought to be taught. Generally speaking, the reaction of people at that time was, elders? What are elders? Now there's been a tremendous change because today you can go to almost any city where the Word of God has come, at least in the Western world, and people talk about the elders, the elders of the city, the elders of the church. So things are developing. But the theme that I want to deal with tonight, I believe, is another major aspect of restoration, and that is the headship of Jesus.